When one hears of the Atacama Desert, he or she will usually associate it with the country of Chile, and maybe even the small town of San Pedro de Atacama, since this is from San Pedro that most adventures in the region start. In fact, only 15% of the Atacama Desert is in Chile. 85% is here in Argentina. It is the driest non-polar desert in the world, as well as the only true desert. The Atacama receives less precipitation than the polar deserts. It is known as the driest place in the world. Some weather stations in the Atacama have never received rain. Some riverbeds have been proven dry for 120,000 years. The average elevation is 4,500 meters. Some of the landscapes are so weird that they have been used as locations for filming Mars scenes. Until recently, some parts of the Atacama were used by the Dakar Rally. So, this is where we are headed, in search of adventure and solitude. Behind me, beyond the sand dunes, lie Fiambala, a small town of about 2,300 people, founded in 1702. On the other side of the valley, to the west of Fiambala, uh, the altitude increases significantly and we enter the uh, Atacama Desert and one of the highest regions in the world, actually the second highest region in the world after the Himalayas, because in that area there are at least half a dozen summits of over 6,000 meters. This area will be the uh, goal of our uh, expedition to what is called the Balcon del Pisces, which is a kind of an overlook to the volcano Pisces. The overlook is at 4,700 meters of altitude. And then uh, we'll go down to the Laguna Verde, the Green Lake, where we will spend a night and then the next day uh, retrace our steps. Before uh, reaching Fiambala, we made a few interesting stops that uh, I would like to share with you. So stay tuned and welcome to Sinrumbo. Hello and again, welcome to Sinrumbo. I'm Philippe. So we covered about a thousand kilometers from our home in Mendoza to Fiambala in the province of Catamarca, Argentina. On the way, we stopped, uh, we stopped at uh, Canyon del Ocre, uh, which lies about 28 kilometers off the pavement along a mining road. And for us, it was a perfect place to spend a night in the wild on our journey towards Fiambala. Uh, we were alone at uh, 2,800 meters of altitude and uh, our companion for the night was the full moon, which lit the canyon in a beautiful way. Getting closer to Fiambala, uh, the interest is uh, what is called the Ruta del Adobe, the Adobe uh, route. Uh, it's a section of the highway that uh, still has a number of adobe constructions dating back to the 18th and 19th century that are still standing and worth visiting. The first one we uh, visited is uh, the Church of La Mercedes which lies about five kilometers off the pavement and is uh, well preserved. It's interesting to walk through these uh, old buildings and wonder what the life of the people who built uh, in these areas could have been like. Uh, was it better or 
more difficult than uh, the life of people who live in these remote areas of uh, Argentina. It's hard to say and hard to know.
we are crossing the uh, sand dune field towards uh, the hamlet of Taton. We had lunch in Taton, but the wind started picking up shortly after, so we decided to drive back. And on the drive back to Fiambala on the highway, we got caught in a fairly serious sandstorm. Uh, a new experience for us. We were to have another surprise later when we uh, drove into the gas station to fill up for uh, uh, our expedition tomorrow. Uh, there was no way to uh, open the, um, the gas tank uh, door. The electronic release would not open. I made a call to the Ford uh, 800 number and they recommended a local uh, shop and uh, thank God they were open and the guy looked into it and the solenoid was actually jammed by a small stone that we had picked up uh, who knows when. It's uh, almost 7 a.m. Friday morning, uh, the day we start our drive to the Balcon del Pisces and the Laguna Verde. Yesterday afternoon, we were forced inside the truck for a couple of hours while we waited for the dust storm to pass. Uh, but then the temperature cooled off and we enjoyed a nice evening. So now we're going to get ready, have breakfast. I'll do a final uh, walk around of the truck and then uh, hopefully by nine o'clock we'll be able to stop the drive. We have a 3,000 meter elevation gain in front of us. So that's roughly a 10,000 feet between here and the Balcon del Pisces. We've got a full tank of diesel, an extra 20 liters in the red jerry can. We've got a uh, full supply of water, food, we're taking advantage of the internet in the uh, gas station cafe to check our emails and messages one last time. We're as ready as can be. Meters from the turn off from the highway to the Balcon del Pisces. We're at 3,000 meters, so uh, a little over 10,000 feet. <laughs> We're climbing slowly. We're in third gear at uh, 70 kilometers an hour, and it's hard to do any better than that. 
Uh, it's very windy and it's gotten a lot colder. I'm thinking we probably uh, lost 10 degrees uh, Celsius between uh, Fiambala and here. We stopped earlier and uh, just had a short break, but definitely cooler. So I think when we turn off the highway, we'll uh, have to take out some uh, warmer clothes and shoes. So we just turned off the pavement and we started the road towards the Balcon del Pisis and the Laguna Verde. So we have about 90 kilometers, about 60 miles to cover. Uh, we'll be climbing from uh, 3,000 meters, 10,000 feet to 4,700. Um, I'll put it on the screen from the top of my head. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, we're entering very hostile environment. It's remote, uh, high altitude, so very low oxygen for us and the truck. Uh, cold temperatures and um, what I'm going to do now is uh, take out some air from the tires to soften up uh, the ride and the suspension and, uh, and then get going. While we were deflating the, well, taking air out of the tires, we saw a number of uh, pickup trucks drive by. There are a number of local guides who uh, take tourists to these uh, destinations. But these guys don't, uh, don't lower their tire pressure, so we caught up to them because our ride is a lot more comfortable, we've got better traction and uh, well we've already passed the 4000 meter uh, altitude and as you can see we're climbing and climbing and climbing so we have uh, now passed the 4000 meter altitude 4,300 that is showing me, uh, which would be, I don't know, something like uh, 13, 14,000 feet at least in uh, feet. Uh, well, we've been climbing actually quite well. The road has been graded because it leads to an active mine. So actually while we were uh, <coughs> recording the intro, uh, just after leaving the pavement, Saw a number of uh, mining trucks. Along the way, at regular intervals, there are a number of uh, shelters that are uh, placed here. Uh, as you can see, there's basic supplies, and uh, you can make a <coughs> fire. Uh, there's supposed to be something to contact uh, search and rescue, but I haven't seen it. But anyways, I'll show you from the outside what it looks like, but I can't talk outside, it's too windy. Well, I apologize for not showing you more uh, landscapes and video scenes uh, shot stable on tripod uh, with the DSLR, but it is so windy here that it's just impossible. Uh, I tried earlier and I couldn't even open my, um, my door. The wind was blowing like fine uh, rocks and dirt and it's just impossible. Uh, we found a place that's not too too windy here to uh, park the truck uh, facing the wind so we could open the back and um, we just uh, finished lunch 
it was very nice to be able to um, have a proper lunch we had a glass of wine we made the salad we made coffee um, it's actually not cold for now like it's third it is 13 degrees Celsius inside the truck um, and uh, the Sun is kind of nice but the wind uh, but the wind lowers the temperature quite a bit so anyways we're gonna be on our way now we're at uh, 4600 something so we've we're at very close to the maximum altitude which is 4700 a little further up so still climbing so far the truck has been behaving well uh, both of us are doing well as well no headache and trying to drink Water. Drink water, yes. <laughs> well, we did have wine during lunch. What happens at that altitude? There is very little oxygen, so the uh, and the air is very dry. The lungs work harder, and uh, the moisture that they expel from the body is not replaced. So drinking is very important, and uh, not waiting until one feels thirsty. Drinking water. Drinking water. My wife eats it. No. We're trying to decide which tr which track is the right one. Uh, to go there. Well. So we have reached the Balcon del Pisces, 4,700 meters. That's our accomplishment. We still have to go down to the Laguna Verde, uh, right in front of us. And um, of course, uh, come back up here tomorrow night. But uh, well, it's nice to be here. Congratulations, Cathy, to Sinrumbo. Yay! from the Balcon del Pisces towards the Laguna Verde and hopefully a nice camp spot It's amazing the vastness of the landscapes and the one Straight ahead now with the snow, the ice field is the Monte Pisces. This is just unbelievable. This is exactly what we came for. This amazing landscape. there are very few places in the world where you can experience these kind of landscapes I think this is typically uh, South American uh, landscapes I don't think there's anything like that in North America or Australia or <coughs> so remote so high altitude
plan because uh, we first we didn't find a track to the Laguna Verde. Um, we were at the uh, supposed intersection and there was nothing there. Uh, we found a nice little spot to camp, a flat area, and uh, there was a little stream running by and uh, it looked very cute. Um, not much wind. But uh, Kathy noticed after a few minutes that the stream was running faster and, uh, and had doubled in size and we had to cross it and uh, there are some uh, nasty storm clouds to the south so we didn't want to take the chance of uh, having to move overnight and uh, or being stranded over there. So anyways, we left the place and drove back, uh, there's, I think you saw in the video uh, going there that there are a few uh, kilometers of uh, sandy track, so we wanted to be out of that and uh, yeah, you can see the clouds here to the right. So we're stopped for the night, we found a flat spot at the Balcon del Pisces. And uh, well, the weather, it's hard to say what it's doing, but it's not really seriously threatening. So hopefully it will be well here. We're on high ground and uh, by the side of the road. So we're not isolated and uh, high altitude. So it's not too, too windy actually. Uh, it seems to be okay. So I'll let you know tomorrow how it went tomorrow morning. Well, we did survive the, the night. We were not cold at all. We were well prepared for cold, but uh, still the altitude has affected us. Our stomachs are weird. I don't have my usual appetite this morning. Katy has a nasty headache. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's nice to be here, but I think we're gonna break camp and uh, head down to lower altitudes. We're almost back at the pavement, so I'm gonna inflate the tires again to highway pressure. And then we'll continue the pavement. It's called the Ruta de los Seis Miles.
So we had lunch at 3,800 meters along the Ruta de los Seis Miles. We stopped at uh, one of the refugios because uh, <coughs> there's a place to park. It's just amazing landscape here and um, now Cathy is doing the dishes. Amazing lunch. We had an amazing lunch, I have to specify. <laughs> <laughs> Well, since we're lower uh, at lower altitude, it was easier to cook something. <coughs> higher, higher up, like everything is a huge effort, and uh, this morning we were not too bright-eyed. <laughs> we took we took time to make uh, coffee in our Volturno. It's the Argentine brand of the Italian uh, stovetop uh, mocha coffee pots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> many names.
in the next episode our adventure continues. We navigate through an immense salt flat, then slowly climb towards a volcano. Navigation gets even more difficult when we drive several hours among huge sand hills in a landscape that never seems to end. <laughs>